always be yourself. Unless you suck. Then pretend to be somebody else. And that's on Azzyland. <laughs> Hello ladies and genitals. Today we're going to be talking about SS Sniper Wolf because somehow this situation has got even worse. So in case you're living under a rock, Jax Films made some funny little quirky videos where he made parodies of Sniper Wolf's content. He basically just made similar types of videos to her to critique her content. So she responded by telling millions of people where he lives. You know, rational behaviour, definitely not insane. But basically, YouTube tried to gloss over all of this and, you know, protect her image because they love her and the money she makes them. But a running theme for people like me who cannot wrap our head around Sniper Wolf's content is the fact we think it's just putting her face next to other people's stuff and making noises to it. Many of us believe that she adds nothing and profits and doesn't credit the creators. That's my opinion, the videos aren't for me. But another creator called Azzyland posts very similar things. And I mean very similar types of videos. Now I know what you're thinking, OMG Mr5161, why is this person ripping off our lord and saviour SS Sniper Wolf? Well, 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 have I got news for you. A YouTuber who goes by the name of Nerd City actually decided to interview Azzyland and it was a very interesting watch. And if everything that was said is true, Sniper Wolf is actually stealing from Azzyland. Yes, according to this interview, the entire upward trajectory of Sniper Wolf's content is stolen. Which is very surprising and definitely not a shock. Talk of stolen content has never been a topic of discussion surrounding Sniper Wolf, has it? Has it? But before I share the interview with you guys, I just want to touch on the fact that Azzyland, to my knowledge, has a fairly clean public name. Yes, there's been some questionable music made in the past. But apart from that, there's nothing really that I'm aware of that I think I should be aware of. Sniper Wolf, on the other hand, big name. Big controversies. Gets away with everything and has some, um, other issues going on right now that for legal reasons I'm not going to get into. They involve law people and her ex. So yes, interview. Me nice. It's more than that. It's like, you don't deserve to live because you've, you've stolen from this person and ruined their life. I'm like, I didn't do anything to their life. The comments were that dramatic that they were telling you like, KYS and stuff. Yeah. Bloody hell. This is absolutely mental. Sniper Wolf's little army are sending threats of unaliving to someone because they make similar reaction videos. I'll be honest, I don't really give a shit about the whole stealing videos debate as long as people are being credited for their content and it falls under fair use. Like, there's no issue. But for one of these two to say the other one is stealing videos is just ridiculous because they don't make the videos in the first place. They watch other people's things. None of it's original. You just sit there and go, oh wow, look at that on the screen. Like, that's it. That's all we do. Like, right now, I'm watching something that someone else is making and I will leave a link to that video in the descriptions you can watch it. But this sort of attitude of defending a creator to death is just, it's just absurd. What, why are you doing it? People idolise other people for going, oh, what shall I react to today? Oh, satisfying moments. Oh, look at me. Oh, that's so satisfying. These creators don't know you exist. They're massive. They're sitting there in their mansions at night with their feet up, not worrying about money or anything. Definitely not worrying that little Timmy on YouTube is sending death threats to people because of her. Like, that sort of thing you're doing to support is doing nothing. It's not adding anything to that person's life, but the person who's receiving the message that could be really impactful. So stop it. Now. She created the narrative that you had cloned her. Yeah. When it was the other way around. Yeah, I have fans, like, I guess playing both sides and, like, messaging me and telling me that she, she's DMing them and, like, she's kind of, like, encouraging people to hate on me. I think, like, that's very manipulative because she's in a position of power and she knows that by messaging children that they'll be starstruck. They'll believe her. They'll be starstruck. That is extremely accurate, and I do agree with that. Like, I genuinely agree with that. I think on one of my previous videos about Elphaba, she was messaging her fans, basically getting them to stand in support and solidarity with someone who'd said some really naughty racist words on live, and Elphaba was like, if you stand with them for me, I'll follow you back. There's, like, incentives from these big creators to young and impressionable children 
that if they do this thing that the creator thinks is very cool and poggers, that they'll get something in return. Like the kids watching it will see it as a way to like get to know their idol or their favorite person that they look up to. God, imagine looking up to these people. And it is scary that they have this like impact, this power over people. They are called influencers for a reason. It's their job title, it's what they do, it's their is their bread and butter, is all they know. But with great power comes great responsibility. And responsibility isn't creating a little army of children to go and send hate comments. All because someone used the same color as you on a bloody thumbnail. It's just so insane to me. Again, she steals and then tries to destroy. Yeah, because I'm a walking proof of like what she's done in her head. I mean, I get lots of messages that people have been doing this to me. Like there's people that copy what I wear and even try to talk like me, which is I think creepy as fuck. Why would you want to talk like somebody else? Like why? I'm not gonna lie, I thought the main issue people had with SS Sniper Wolf is the way that she talks. I thought, I thought people found her annoying. But from watching this interview, I actually saw that Azzy was accused so much of copying the way Sniper Wolf talks, even though if you see what is in the interview, you see it was again kind of the other way around as he kind of goes like I don't want to be compared anymore so I'll stop talking like that and actually forgot how to talk like that anymore and I do struggle to you know understand why people give a shit. I'm a small YouTuber, right? I don't, I like, I'm like. i very small YouTuber. Um, I don't even call myself a YouTuber. I get compared to the bigger YouTubers all the time. Like, for some reason, people tell me I look like Joe Weller. People say I talk like George Clarkey. Sometimes people say I look like I'm Alex. I, I don't think I do. I know it's a bit random. You didn't click on this video because you wanted to hear me talk about my voice. You wanted to talk about Azzy. But she actually gets hate for the voice, which is absolutely mental. And as we saw earlier, the ringleader does not discourage these attacks. If anything, they are enabled. She assembles her pathetic little troops and sends them into battle. But the battles are in her head. I actually really admire the way um, Azzy comes across in this video. There was actually a moment in the interview where Nerd City, the interviewer, had a slip of the tongue and actually called Azzy Land Azzy Wolf. And this was met with laughter and jokes, not Arg, I want to get to your channel taken down. So to me, that showed me who the original was and who the poorly made remaster was. In that video where she's accusing you of copying from her the red thumbnail, she scrolls down, but she didn't scroll down far enough to show that you'd done it first. Yeah. She hadn't gone as far as Photoshop a fake proof, but she showed them a fake scroll down through the content. It's mind games. It's like, uh, like so she, she stro scrolled like right up until the point before you saw that I had also done a red thumbnail and then stopped. And just like I mentioned earlier, it is extremely easy to manipulate and influence people these days. Because let's be real, people believe who they want to believe. And if someone believes they are seeing legitimate evidence, they're just gonna believe it. Because people's first response these days, if they don't wanna be easy manipulated, if they don't wanna be fooled, is they go, oh, where's the proof? Where's the evidence? And they see something which they think is proof, there's no proof that it is proof, but they just go, oh, there's proof, yes. And then they can run away with that. And that's the worrying thing here, fake evidence. Not manufactured, just fake. It's like some sort of mind game to like actually trick people into thinking, oh, this is like, this is it. This is your proof. This is your weapon that you can use in this war against Azzyland. All in a battle that she's created. As he literally says to us, none of this actually matters to her. She doesn't care. The threats and stuff, that's an issue. But like the war on content, it's just, it's irrelevant. And I get the impression that Azzy is self-aware and she knows the videos that she reacts to and stuff like that. They're, they're not her videos. She doesn't claim them to be her videos. The content itself is not original. And she even jokes about setting little traps, like a really hidden watermark in her thumbnails. So that, you know, if Sniper Wolf or whoever makes Sniper Wolf's thumbnails takes them from Azzyland, you can see, oh look, the little thumbnail's there. You copied that from me, busted. And all of that just so she can laugh at hypocrisy. I've actually like considered putting like a, like a hidden watermark into into thumbnails to like see if, she, if like it. Well, you've done more, you've done more than consider it. Maybe Leah, if you're watching this, you've copied something already that we set a trap. But look at her, right? She's laughing. That's not someone who is genuinely interested in going into some sort of content wars with YouTube's Golden Girl. But straight after being called out for plagiarism, as he tells us what we're all kind of thinking. Well, the reason why this is also such a difficult thing to talk about is because of the, the whole way that reaction content works is we are reacting to what's the most viral on the internet. So the ideas are like, they're they're not our ideas it's whatever's viral it's the whole internet's idea of what what is popular 
right? So like taking ownership of that doesn't work. There you go, I could not have worded that any better, which in my eyes makes her self-aware. And more of a relatable person, which I think in reaction content is kind of important. You kind of want to be able to like, you know, be relating with the person who's reacting. Otherwise it's just someone on the screen watching a video. And personally, if I was YouTube, I'd be pushing this sort of stuff out more because it kind of puts the you in YouTube. But instead, let's go push out someone with loads of controversy surrounding her right now. They encourage children to bully people. They don't credit creators and just straight up steal. There's a screenshot in this video which literally proves like it dates back to 2017 where Aziland actually used the, you know, the, the red thing in her thumbnail first. So the thing we spoke about earlier about Sniper Wolf not scrolling down far enough in that video to prove her point is even even backed up by like a historic screenshot. So it's false and she was trying to manipulate her viewers. I hope their apologies are as loud as their criticism. Manipulation is not poggers. But people might be thinking, oh, it's just a splash of color on your thumbnail. What's the big issue? Why are people getting so annoyed about some color on a thumbnail? So the whole red next to her face on the thumbnail is, is I guess is a type of branding technique. She wants people to, you know, associate a certain style of thumbnail with her videos, which means anyone who enjoys watching her content, when you're scrolling through your YouTube feed, you see the red, that stands out, you know, you know, that pops out, that's eye-catching. And you straight away think, oh look, Sniper Wolf's uploaded, let me watch that. And because Azzy does the same, she wants to destroy. Sniper Wolf wants the colour red to be associated with her, because the use of a contrasting colour makes it stand out more on a thumbnail, and apparently this is a good enough reason to attack someone personally. And a lot of creators use the same sort of thing, like, you know, they use an eye-catching colour, they might use the same one over and over again. You can associate it a bit better with the person. Like I use in my thumbnails, I use the colour blue. That's just because I like the colour blue, it's my favourite colour. But SS Sniper Wolf feels like she owns the colour red, which is, well, strange. But what an eye-opening insight into such a delightful creator. And I haven't even spoken about the house tour video because, to be honest, I think it's quite frankly ridiculous. It is such a blatant carbon copy. The fact that you do the exact same video, make the same points about like mirrors and stuff, and wear the same colour dress, like not even the same colour, like it looks exactly the same. In my opinion, it's just a blatant rip-off. You know, this was her opportunity to, you know, do something a bit more original because, let's be honest, this is a video for your core audience. They, they want to enjoy watching like how you've grown as a creator, they've grown with you sort of thing and they're like, this is the benefits of everything. Because like, you'd imagine it'd be like quite a relaxed, wholesome video for your viewers. You know, maybe try out a new editing style, not worry about retention because you've got your core audience there already, they'll probably watch it because they like you. But no, even here, Let's just copy what other people are doing, shall we? I just can't wrap my head around it. But like, obviously this is just my opinion. So like, don't take this as like facts. But come on, it doesn't take a detective to work this sort of thing out. And there are other things about Sniper Wolf that people could be talking about right now. You know, something involving a young fan who sadly passed away, which I don't really want to get into because I don't want that to be like confused with jokes because I don't want to make jokes about that sort of thing. But anyway, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please do feel free to leave a like and subscribe. Subscribing is completely free and you can always unsubscribe at any moment if you get sick of the sight of my stupid ugly face. But uh, yeah, cheers. Bye.